Marvel Studios rarely misses in the eyes of fans. For over a decade now, the Disney-owned brand has dominated with hit after hit, but it wasn't always perfect. Some of these productions have had a real rocky road. Some of them actually never even came out. Today, we're gonna look at one of those rare Marvel missteps. We're gonna look at whatever happened to Edgar Wright's Ant-Man. What the hell happened here? The story of Edgar Wright's canceled Ant-Man movie starts long before there was even a Marvel Cinematic Universe. Known for his popular films like Shaun of the Dead and Scott Pilgrim, Wright's path to working on Ant-Man started way back in 2003. Twelve years before that Marvel movie even reached the cinemas, Wright began working on this film with his partner, Joe Cornish. So around this time, in the early 2000s, when Edgar Wright began working on his Ant-Man screenplay, Artisan Entertainment actually owned the rights to an Ant-Man movie. This was around the time where Marvel had to sell off all its various properties because they needed some money, and it was a rough time. And it kind of got rougher because Artisan Entertainment did not like what Edgar Wright was cooking up. Around this time, when he was working on the screenplay, Edgar Wright would discuss how he felt about it, and he would say, quote, we wrote this treatment revolving around the Scott Lang character who was a burglar so he could have gone around slightly in the Elmore Leonard route and that's where they came back saying oh well we wanted to do like this family thing I don't think that it ever even got sent over to Marvel from Artisan. Well Artisan obviously didn't like what they were doing there and they wanted to go a different route. They would go on to make hit films like The Punisher yeah, great decision there, guys. So we had Edgar Wright and Joe Cornish sitting on the screenplay for quite some time. They would both go on to make their own movies and actually have some fun in the industry while they waited. Joe Cornish actually made the Attack the Block film that came out around this time. You need to see it. It is a great, great film. It is so, so much fun. Yeah, this was kind of sad for them, though, because they had this Ant-Man idea and had nothing to do with it. That was until Edgar Wright had a uh, random bump in with someone named Kevin Feige. In a chance encounter, Edgar Wright and Kevin Feige ran into each other and began to talk about this Ant-Man project. Kevin Feige was so impressed with Edgar Wright that in April of 2006, Marvel Studios had hired Wright to direct and co-write this film with Cornish. 2006 San Diego Comic-Con would roll around and Edgar Wright would even appear with Jon Favreau, who would go on to direct Iron Man, to tease Ant-Man. This would be around the time that Edgar Wright was promoting his then new film Hot Fuzz and it was a great time to be that filmmaker. During the San Diego Comic-Con panel, his passion for the Ant-Man project was obvious and he would go into great detail from what he would say was his point of view for the Ant-Man character. At the time, Wright would go on to say, quote, The idea that we have for this adaptation is to actually involve Scott Lang and Hank Pym. So actually, we wanted to do a prologue where you see Pym as Ant-Man in action in the 60s in a sort of Tales to Astonish mode, basically. And then we would switch to the contemporary sort of fast forward to see Scott Lang's story. Edgar Wright obviously knew what he was doing. So by 2008, he had a finished first draft. He was so excited to turn it in. He's been like, again, working on this since 2003. So this has been some time he's been sitting on Ant-Man. It's 2008. He wants to send it over to Marvel and they're not really looking for Ant-Man at this moment. This is early phase one of Marvel. So they were trying to do, you know, their priority films there like Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. It just didn't, it just didn't fit at that time. And Edgar Wright would, okay, take that as time to maybe tweak on it and work it a little bit more. From 2008, we would fast forward all the way to 2011. Oh boy, not a great sign. Wright would then turn in his second draft of the script. This is around the time he had completed Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and he was looking to start his next big project. This was also around the time that Marvel was getting ready for their big Avengers film, and they were going to enter a new era after. Things were starting to look up for this Ant-Man project. Wright would even shoot some test footage. 
Around the time that test footage was shot, Marvel Studios and Edgar Wright would go on to delay this project until around 2012, allowing Edgar Wright to finish production on The World's End. Edgar Wright would go on to tackle that passion project of The World's End and had a personal attachment. That film would actually go on to be one of his most well-regarded and that put the filmmaker on a next level and he was pumped to get back into Ant-Man mode. So that test footage that he shot a month later, Wright would take it to a San Diego Comic-Con panel in 2012 and it would get rave reviews from audience in attendance. All right, so we are in 2012. Edgar Wright has his test footage. It went amazingly well. He had a clear slate. Marvel was ready to get into the Ant-Man business and this looked like a great time. Sadly, this is where things would take a turn for the worse. All these delays ahead of this would lead to a ugh, bad couple months for the production of this film. Now, studios and directors often butt heads, but the way Wright and Feige disagree really took a toll on both filmmakers. The differences began in the casting process where the studio had their pick for Scott Lang while Wright had his. Ironically, Edgar Wright would push for Paul Rudd while Marvel wanted to go with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. This would cause some minor friction, but nothing too crazy, and Edgar Wright would get his way and have Paul Rudd star as Scott Lang. The cast then started to take shape with people like Michael Douglas, Corey Stoll, Michael Pena, and Evangeline Lilly all joining shortly after this. Okay, so we got the cast going here, but what about the script? That was the issue there. Marvel and Edgar Wright could not agree on the script. They had issues from kind of the jump and then it just wasn't clicking with the second and third and you know all these drafts coming in. It wasn't really working. So Marvel would bring in two in-house writers to tweak the script. Edgar Wright did not know that they were gonna do that. And when he got that new script, he felt his vision just wasn't there anymore. Wright already had the delays, the friction with Kevin Feige, and now once he saw the rewrites done to his script, he finally walk away. He took this as the last straw for him and Marvel, and he said that the two would never agree. In an interview years later, Wright would go on to say, quote, I wanted to make a Marvel movie, but I don't think they wanted to make an Edgar Wright movie. I was the writer and director on it, and then they wanted to do a draft without me. Having written all my own movies before that, that was a tough thing moving forward. If I do one of these movies, do I still get to be a writer-director? Around this time, Kevin Feige would go on to say that they were just not a match for each other, and sadly found out about this a little bit too late. How late? about a month before they were gonna start filming the movie. For some reference here though, this isn't the only time that Kevin Feige has had some issues with a filmmaker. You look at things like his issues with Terrence Howard going from Iron Man 1 to Iron Man 2. You also had the creative differences he had with directors like Patty Jenkins and Ava DuVernay, which is why they never went on to make uh, Thor Dark World and Black Panther. You also had his stuff with Josh Whedon, which, you know, you know, two people who have big egos butting heads, it's fair to say that Kevin Feige has his vision and Edgar Wright's vision just did not line up with his. So Edgar Wright would leave the project. This allowed him to focus on another passion project called Baby Driver and it left Marvel looking for another director. They went to comedy writer Adam McKay to punch up the script, but he couldn't direct it. They would go to Peyton Reed and he would end up directing the film. Edgar Wright and Cornish would maintain story and screenplay credits on Ant-Man. Now, after all of that drama, Ant-Man was finally released in theaters and it got a decent reaction from fans and critics and it had a solid box office, but nothing like the MCU around that time. Though looking at the film, it actually had no major connections to the larger MCU and that whole hubbub about it being too distinctly Edgar Wright's vision it feels weird because the film didn't really have a point of view and it really didn't tie into the Marvel Universe overall. So what was the issue here? It does seem like both Marvel and Edgar Wright were happy with their choices to split apart and have gone on to do very well without each other. Oh, I actually had nowhere to put this, so let's finish this off with this. Weird fun fact, in the year 2000, Howard Stern, yes, 
this Howard Stern tried to make an Ant-Man movie. He tried to get the rights from Artisan Entertainment. At least they rejected him and Edgar Wright, so they're pretty even there. But looking at all of this drama about Edgar Wright's Ant-Man film, it seems sad that we never really got to see his big final vision. But it worked out for Marvel and it has worked out for Edgar Wright because he's gone on to make so many films that are beloved by fans. But what do you guys think? Did you want to see Edgar Wright's Ant-Man? Were you upset when this movie was canceled? Let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth and give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Now you know whatever happened to Edgar Wright's Ant-Man.